All right, first off, I want to apologize. I'm not a great speaker, but I'm going to try my best to try to explain what the hell happened with Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 was a GameCube exclusive when it launched in January 2005. That's why the controls and the polish isn't up to today's standards, but back then, it was the standard, right? So Capcom and Nintendo had a deal where the the mainline Resident Evil games would be exclusive to GameCube, but spinoffs were allowed on other systems, like the Resident Evil Outbreak series, which was on PS2. This game right here was the last game with fixed camera angles and tank controls as classic RE fans knew them. It did really, really bad. I'm showing off uh, early builds of Resident Evil 4. And there's at least two specific builds I remember being shown. I think this could be actually three. But Double May Cry was originally intended to be a Resident Evil game. And that ended up becoming a new IP. And you can see some of the gothic architecture in Resident Evil 4. Because they share some of the same assets. And the other game was Haunting Ground. Uh... I don't know if anybody played that, Fiona and Huey, and the, it's like a kind of a clock tower type game. Stalkers chasing you. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, in this build right here, you can see that the camera angle is a lot different than the final build. But when you're aiming down in this one with the hook man, it actually goes similar to what you see in the final game. With over the shoulder, and also had the fixed camera angles. It's actually really cool. You're the man who lost a mother and a brother to evil 20 years ago. The son of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta, Mr. Dante. Huey even gets a cameo in Resident Evil 4. And it is so infuriating, but it's also like refreshing to know we've come so far in the video game space. Like I have uh, so many thoughts about like the actual like gameplay portions of it. But um, part of my problem is that I got super embarrassed because I was playing this game on stream. I was like, oh, Resident Evil 4 is a classic game. Not a problem. Super easy, right? I jump on stream and I start playing it. I literally can't control Leon. I'm so embarrassed. I got like seven people watching I me was play one. this. And I'm like, <laughs> we're going to switch to Cult of the Lamb. And I loved it. <laughs> but, oh, I uh, love that game too. Yeah. Man, I... The story for this game... I really was the whole time. I'm like, how does this connect to Resident Evil? Does it connect to Resident Evil? And I had a friend watching me play because she's been like guiding me through it. Cause, and she was like, I love Resident Evil 4. And the whole time I'm asking her, why? Why? <laughs> so apparently the whole... Hey, I'm going to stop it right there. This game is meant to be a reboot of the franchise, right? Umbrella's gone. They tell you this at the beginning of the game. Check this out. I'm going to go to new game. Resident Evil 4. 1998. I'll never forget it. It was the year when those grisly murders occurred in the Arklay Mountains. Soon after, the news was out to the whole world, revealing that it was the fault of a secret viral experiment conducted by the international pharmaceutical enterprise, Umbrella. The virus broke out in a nearby mountain community, Raccoon City, and hit the peaceful little town with a devastating blow crippling its very foundation. Not taking any chances, the President of the United States ordered a contingency plan to sterilize Raccoon City. With the whole affair gone public, the United States government issued an indefinite suspension of business decree to Umbrella. Soon its stock prices crashed, and for all intents and purposes, Umbrella was finished.
Six years have passed since that horrendous incident. 